Building a website can be a daunting task. You need to choose a design. You need to figure out what images and content will go on your website. And you need to put it all together in a way that looks good. In this video, we're going to do all that and more using WordPress. We'll take care of choosing hosting and a domain, finding the right theme or design, picking out a few crucial plugins, and we're going to put it all together for you. We're going to do all of this from scratch in about an hour. The best part about this video is we aren't just making a single site. No, we're showing you everything you need to know to build out your own site. We'll teach you how to find the right resources and then how to get up and running fast so you can make the modifications you need to make this website your own. And here's the website we're making, coffeebyjoe.com. Again, while this will be the final product of this video, we're going to give you everything you need to take it and make it your own. Before we get started, there are some important things that you should know going into WordPress. As explained later in the video, WordPress does a very good job of separating our content from our design and our features. Our content is managed through WordPress's content management system. We can add and manipulate content without worrying about messing up the design of our website. The design of our website is handled by themes. There are literally thousands of themes out there to choose from. When looking for your own theme, you should look for designs you like, features you need for your website, and whether you're willing to pay for a premium theme or if you'd rather go with a free theme. Plugins, on the other hand, offer access to features of WordPress. While WordPress does a lot of things really well out of the box, a few things it doesn't do are things like spam management, contact forms, and social sharing buttons. Plugins are what give WordPress its true power because they can transform WordPress from a blogging platform into a podcast platform or even an e-commerce store. The next thing we'll do is design our homepage. WordPress's state-of-the-art customizer allows us to make tweaks and changes to every aspect of our WordPress site. We're going to really take advantage of that. And finally, we're going to create the rest of our content. So we're going to build out an about page, a blog, and a contact page complete with Google Maps. To recap, in this video, we are going to buy hosting and a domain so that our website has some place to live. We are going to install WordPress as that will be the content management system that we're using for our website. We're going to secure our domain through SSL. We're going to find, install, and configure our theme or design. We're going to install the following plugins. Jetpack for its performance and social sharing. Ninja Forms for its contact form creation. Yoast SEO for search engine optimization and a Google Maps block to add a Google Map to our contact page. Then we'll go through and design the entire site, adding elements to the home page and adding content for our about, blog, and contact page. Let's get started. We're going to go with SiteGround, which offers some of the best shared hosting for WordPress at an affordable price. They also constantly update their servers and software to the latest versions for added reliability, speed, and security. They offer free daily backups, setup, and site transfer, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you visit winningwp.com slash ref slash siteground dash special dash offer, you'll be taken to a special offer page for Winning WP visitors. Winning WP does get a small commission if you use that link. However, it does not affect the price that you pay. We're going to go with the startup hosting plan, which 
is three ninety five per month to start. We'll click get started, and the first thing we'll do is register a domain. Since we're creating a coffee shop, we're going to get the domain coffeebyjoe.com. Domain registration is an extra fifteen ninety five per year. We'll click proceed. And then we'll be prompted to set up our account. Once we put in our address and billing information, we'll be brought to the hosting and extra services area. So we're going to get the startup plan. It'll be for a period of 12 months to get the deal. And then we can purchase some extra services. Domain registration, as we said earlier, is not included in the price, but we will need that. We can also choose to get domain privacy. By registering a domain, our personal information becomes publicly available unless we protect it with domain privacy. We're going to uncheck this for the purposes of this video, but it's definitely something worth considering. Finally, we could also get SG Site Scanner, which is a monitoring service through SiteGround. We're going to uncheck that as well. Our total will be $59.03. We'll confirm that we've read the terms and agreement, and we will uncheck receiving SiteGround news and special offers. Once payment goes through successfully, we will be able to go to our account in the customer area. The first thing we'll do is be prompted by SiteGround to set up our new hosting account. And it's asking us exactly what we want to do. So we'll click start a new website and then we'll choose to install WordPress. We can put in our admin information here and then we'll click confirm. We'll again be asked about the extra services, the domain privacy and the site ground scanner. We'll click confirm and we will click complete setup. SiteGround will automatically install WordPress for us and we'll get an email when the setup is complete. Once our account is ready, we'll click proceed to customer area. And from the customer area, we'll click my accounts. Here, we'll see our account for both our hosting and our domain. You might notice that the status of our domain is pending verification. That's because we're required to verify our email address when we register a domain. SiteGround will email us about this, so we simply need to click the link in the email they send us with the subject verification required. We'll go ahead and do that, and then we'll scroll down to make sure our information is correct and click verify information. Our domain has now been verified, and if we go back to our hosting area and refresh, the status will change as well. It may take some time for the status to update, but rest assured when you see the verification email and click the link, your domain will be verified. The last thing we'll do before we actually get to the WordPress area is set up an SSL certificate. An SSL certificate will ensure that data is being sent to and from our website securely so that things like usernames, passwords, and other sensitive information can't be intercepted by hackers. To do that on SiteGround, we're going to click Go to cPanel. The first time we click this, SiteGround will recommend that we access cPanel securely, so we're going to make sure this box is checked, and then also check Remember My Selection and do not show this message again. We'll then click Proceed and we'll be brought to cPanel. cPanel gives us a lot of different tools for our website, but we're most interested in a service called Let's Encrypt. So we're going to use the search bar on the left-hand side to look for Let's Encrypt. When that icon shows up under the security tab, we're going to click it, and then we'll be asked for which domain we want to set up Let's Encrypt for. Let's Encrypt is a free, automated and open certificate authority, which means that we can easily and freely get an SSL certificate and secure our websites immediately. You might have noticed that the status 
for our SSL certificate on our domain is already set to active. That's because SiteGround automatically creates an SSL certificate for a domain when we register it through them. With that, let's go back to My Accounts, and from here we can go to our WordPress installation. One thing to point out is our domain is now active. So if we click on Go to Admin panel, we'll be brought to our WordPress site. From here, there are a few things we need to do to get our site up and running. We need to add content, we need to select a theme, and we need to install and configure plugins. WordPress does a very good job of separating content from design from features. And those are the three areas that we're going to look at now. If we go to the front end of our website, we will see the default WordPress theme, which at the time of this recording is called 2019. The theme or design of the website can be easily changed without modifying any of the content we see on the website. If we go back to our dashboard, there's an area called appearance and then themes. We'll get to that in a minute. The other major part of WordPress installations is the plugins. Plugins are the features of our website. And while WordPress can do a lot out of the box, it can do even more with the plugins that we select. We'll get to those in a little bit, but for now, let's talk about choosing the right theme. There are lots of WordPress themes to choose from, both free and premium. To get an idea of what you have available, you can go to Appearance Themes and then Add New Theme. Here, you can access thousands of themes organized by Featured, Popular, Latest, and with the Feature Filter, you can even choose Subject, Specific Features, and Layouts. All of the themes available to you here, all of the themes available to you here are for free. There may be a premium upgrade, but you can install and activate any of these free of charge. There are also premium WordPress themes like the ones available from StudioPress.com. These are generally very well designed, offer better support, and a lot more features. The theme that we're going to be using is the Cafe Pro theme from StudioPress. If you go to StudioPress.com, you can find it under the Shop for Themes options. Again, this is a premium theme, so it will cost money. You can purchase it right from StudioPress.com, and once you make the purchase, you'll be able to go to your downloads area. The reason that we're choosing the Cafe Pro theme is because it is a popular theme that is beautifully designed and works very well for cafes and restaurants. It offers a large number of features and is mobile friendly, so it works no matter what size screen your visitors are viewing it on. Once you make the purchase, you'll need to download two different themes. The Genesis Framework, which Cafe Pro is based on, and Cafe Pro. Both of these themes are required for everything to work properly. So we will download the Genesis Framework and we will download Cafe Pro. Once the themes are downloaded, we can go back to our WordPress website and from Appearance Themes, we can choose Upload Theme. Here we'll have the ability to upload the themes we just downloaded from StudioPress. And first we will upload the Genesis theme. We'll click install now and then we'll return to the themes page. We'll click add new again, upload theme, and then we'll upload the Cafe Pro theme. Once again, the Cafe Pro theme relies on Genesis to work. This is actually checked during the installation process. You can see that WordPress is making sure we have Genesis installed. With that, we're going to go ahead and click Activate. If we visit our site now, you'll see a brand new theme. 
Before we start customizing this, we're also going to install a few plugins. Finding plugins is very similar to finding themes for WordPress. You should make a list of the features that you want, and if WordPress doesn't do them out of the box, you should look for a plugin. There are both free and premium plugins available as well. All of the plugins that we'll be using here are free. We're going to be using Jetpack, which is already installed by SiteGround. This is a multifaceted plugin that allows us to show related posts, optimize for search engines, do social sharing, and more. It's really the Swiss army knife of WordPress plugins, and it's good for most websites to have. We're also going to download Yoast SEO. This is the de facto standard in WordPress SEO plugins. So we're going to search Yoast in the keywords, and then we're going to install the plugin. We're also going to activate it. Once the plugin is activated, we'll be able to go to settings, which we'll do in a little bit. Right now, we're just doing all of the setup. There's two more plugins that we want to get. One is a contact form plugin so that visitors can easily reach out and email us. While there are lots of contact form plugins out there, I'm a big fan of Ninja Forms. It's free and very easy to use. And in most cases, the pre-installed contact form is all we need to get started. So we've searched Ninja Forms and we'll click Install Now and we'll click Activate. Finally, because our cafe is a brick and mortar store, we want people to easily find it. So we're going to get a Google Maps plugin. We're going to look for a Google Maps block. WordPress allows us to create different types of content block, which allows us to easily and more visually create rich content. We're going to use the Google Maps block by Web Factory LTD. So we'll go ahead and install that now and activate it. With all of our plugins installed, let's go ahead and start customizing our website by going to Appearance, Customize. Here you can see the front end of our website or the design of our website, as well as a number of options. The reason that we installed the theme and all of the plugins first is so that if any of those added something to the customizer, we'd be able to see it right here. So let's go through and customize our site. The first thing we'll do is click on site identity. Here we can change the title and the tagline. You can see the site title and tagline correspond with the black box you see in the header. When we change the site title, it changes automatically here on the right hand side. So we have Coffee by Joe. And then we have our tagline. We can also choose a site icon, which is what users will see in browser tabs, bookmark bars, and within the WordPress mobile app. This is completely optional, and we're going to skip over it for now. Next, we'll go to our background images. You can see that there are a few pre-installed images that the Studio Press theme comes with, but if we want to upload our own, we can do that. The default images are 2000 pixels wide and between 1300 and 1500 pixels tall. This gives us an idea for how big our images should be. Since we're a cafe, we're going to go ahead and remove these images and find replacements. One really good place to do that is Unsplash.com. Unsplash offers beautiful photos from a community of photographers for completely free. We don't have to pay for them and we don't have to pay a royalty. So we'll go ahead and search coffee. And already we see a lot of really great images here. Now the images from our theme are wider than they are tall, so we'll keep that in mind as we choose the images. Here's a bunch of coffee beans, I really like that one, so we'll go ahead and download that. 
there's lots of pictures of coffee cups here. This one looks good, so we'll grab that. And the last image we'll get is of a glass of espresso being made. With our images chosen, we'll go back to our WordPress site and we will upload the images. Now you can see that they are titled Featured Section Header Image, Featured Section 2, Featured Section 4. So these are images that will be specifically placed in certain areas of our website. To upload the photo, we'll click Select Image, and then we'll click Select Files. WordPress will allow us to upload all three images at once, and then we can select the one we want for each section. So for the first image, I think we'll choose the coffee cups. And then you can see it automatically gets added. For the second image, we'll do the coffee beans. And for the last image, we will do the espresso being made. We'll see the other images in action once we start to customize the home page. But for now, let's go back. Cafe Pro also allows us to customize the accent color. So you can see it's like this yellowish green now. Since it's a coffee shop, uh, we'll go with something maybe a little bit closer to brown. That looks pretty good. And then we'll go to header image. Now in this case, the header image actually means the logo. So if we upload an image, it will replace this black box area. We're going to leave it as is for now. Then we have our menus. Menus are how people navigate our website. So we want to have at least one. But the theme you choose can support multiple locations. So if we take a look at the locations, you'll see we have three areas. Before the header menu, which is up top. After the header menu, which is right below the menu. And the footer menu, which will show up at the bottom. Let's go ahead and create a new menu. We'll call this main and we'll make it appear before the header. We'll choose next and then we can add items. These are our pages or posts within our website. And you can see that home is already made for us. So we can click on that and it'll automatically get added to the menu. We can also create new pages on the fly. So we're going to have three other pages about blog and contact. So these pages are now created and later in this video we will add content to all of them. A menu can also be reused in multiple sections. So if we also want this to be the footer menu, we can check footer menu and the links will appear at the bottom as well. Let's go ahead and keep that. Widgets are extra sections of content that can be added to various areas of our site depending upon the theme. Here, you can see that we have a widget area on the right-hand side in the sidebar. We'll touch on widgets more in a little bit. So for now, let's move back out and go to home page settings. WordPress was originally made as a blogging platform. We can still see remnants of that today because by default, WordPress will display the latest articles from your blog on the home page. Luckily, there's a way to change that though. Under your home page displays, if we click a static page, we can choose the pages we just created or create a brand new one. So we did not create a page specifically for the home page. So let's go ahead and do that now. We'll call that home and we'll click add. 
for the posts, we're going to choose blog. So now all of our posts will appear on the blog page and our home page is a page that's completely open to new content. After home page settings, we have theme settings. These are settings added by Studio Press. So we can do things like add our email address to get updates, which you'll definitely want to do. If you have Google AdSense to monetize your website, you can add that here. You can also change the site layout. So by default, we have content followed by a primary sidebar. You can also choose the primary sidebar first followed by the content, or you can choose to eliminate the sidebar altogether and have your blog content take up the full width. Because this isn't a blog focused website, we're going to choose the full width content. You can also choose if you want breadcrumbs to appear so that people know where they've been and how deep they are into the website. You can choose to enable comments on posts or pages. You can choose the layout for the content archives. In other words, how your previous blog posts will display. And if you're code savvy, you can add header and footer scripts. The same thing goes for additional CSS. The additional CSS of the customizer assumes that you know how to add your own CSS code in case you want to make your own tweaks to the theme. With that, we're ready to publish our customized website. So we'll go ahead and click publish and then X out of the customizer. Now, if we go to pages, we'll see a set of pages that we created through the customizer. And if we click on home, we'll see the default WordPress editor. However, with studio press themes, we can actually modify the home page with a set of widgets. So if we go back to the Studio Press website and look at Cafe Pro, we can click the Setup Instructions icon. This will bring us to a well-documented area for setting up Cafe Pro. This includes going through some of the customizer stuff that we've already seen, as well as setting up the homepage. You can see that they break the homepage down into multiple sections. Each of these sections is controlled by a widget area. They also make recommendations on how to get the exact layout that they have for their demo site. If we click through these articles, the documentation will tell us exactly how to get the demo that they've set up. We're going to skip over the before header widget area because we don't have a call to action but we do have the navigation at the top and we don't want them to conflict. If we go to home page widget layout configurations, we'll see exactly what happens when we add any number of widgets to each widget area. This is really good information to know if you want to have multiple rows of content. Then we can click on front page one widget area. Again, you can see what it looks like from the demo and how they get that information. This is important information to know because in some cases, they're going to have you copy and paste certain text or even HTML code. But luckily, they make the process very easy. So if we go back to our WordPress website, we'll go back to the customizer and we'll start adding home page widgets. The first one we want to add is the front page. And the documentation recommends that we add this as a text widget. You can see once we add the widget that the home page changes. When we add our title, we'll see it added to the page. And then we can add the text. With that text added, we'll go back out to the next widget area. The second widget area from the demo shows 
a set of menus or courses. Again, this is achieved using the text widget. In actuality, we can add anything we want here. It doesn't necessarily need to be menus, but we can get an idea of the formatting of this section thanks to the demo. So we'll still add three columns of text, but they might be specials or events going on or whatever other content we want to highlight in the second section of our website. So we have our first two sections of the uh, front page two widget area. These are just plain text and we used the bold function to bold certain areas of the text. For book us for your next event, this is also going to be plain text, but we're also going to add a contact button. So let's take a look at how to do that. You can see we have our text and then we're going to add contact us. Using the text widget, we can highlight that text and click insert and edit link. Then we can search for the appropriate link. When we type CON, the contact page will show up and will automatically be linked. However, it's not a button. In order to do that, we need to go to the text area. You could see we have a small bit of HTML here and right after the A, we're going to press space class equals button. Cafe Pro supports creating buttons for links and you could see that we have a nice big button for people to contact us. So that is the second section of our website. The third section of Cafe Pro is also a text area. It uses the text area to display a message, but it also adds an icon to the bottom. It's making use of the dash icons available through WordPress. And we can click on the link in the documentation to see all the dash icons available to us. While this is a limited set of icons, we're going to keep it simple and we're going to use the heart icon. If we click on the heart icon, we can actually copy the HTML that we need. This makes everything a lot easier. We'll click OK and we'll go back to our WordPress site. In the front page three area, we'll add another text area and we'll add some text. So we've added our text and then if we go into the text or code area, we can paste the icon that we just copied and it'll show up. The last section of the home page is actually just a single block so we can add the text block again and include just a simple message that we want to display and you can see that our last image works very well with this message if we click publish and then X out the customizer we can now go to our home page and see everything in full effect. So we have our main image. We have our first message. We have our three column area. We have our message with icon. And finally, drink up. If you want to add footer widgets, you can do that as well in the customizer. But we're going to leave it just like this for now. Before we add the rest of our content, let's go ahead and configure the plugins that we installed earlier. So we'll go back to our dashboard to plugins. The first one we'll want to configure because it takes the most effort is Jetpack. So we will go to the top and click on Jetpack. You can see that we have the option to set up Jetpack. We'll click that and then we'll be taken outside of our website to Jetpack's website, where we can connect WordPress.com and Jetpack to our website. If you already have a WordPress.com account, you will just see the approved button. But if you don't, you'll be prompted to create a new account before you see this. 
Once you create a new account, go ahead and click approve. And then our connection will be authorized. Once our connection is authorized, we'll be brought to the Jetpack plans page. If you want more than what the free plan has to offer, you can check out their personal, premium, and professional plans. They include things like daily offsite backups, malware scanning, and premium themes. We're going to stick with the free version for now. Once Jetpack is authorized, they'll make a recommendation on activating certain features, like the share buttons, giving people the ability to subscribe, and more. We're going to X this out and take a look at each feature individually. So the first thing we're definitely going to want to do is improve our site's performance by using Jetpack's Site Accelerator. We'll click Activate, and now our website should be more efficient. Jetpack will also provide site stats for us. If we scroll down, we could see the number of settings available to us through Jetpack. Certain ones require upgrades, but others do not. For example, we can turn on image performance. This will make our website faster and optimize our images. If we click on the settings area, we'll see a bit more. I would recommend that you go through each of these individually and see if that's something you want to add. But for now, we're going to enable a few. Under sharing, it looks like the publicize and sharing connections are already made. Under discussion, we're going to turn off the enable pop-up business cards. We don't want that one. And we're going to turn off subscriptions. Under traffic, we will turn on related posts. If we're going to be blogging a lot, this is a fantastic feature to have enabled because it helps people find more relevant content. And finally, we'll double check the security settings. Brute force attack protection is already turned on, so we're good to go here. With Jetpack installed and configured, let's go to the next biggest plugin, which is Yoast SEO. The first thing we'll see on the Yoast SEO screen is the ability to configure our website through their wizard. We're going to go ahead and do that. So inside the wizard, we'll click configure Yoast SEO. We'll choose my site is live and ready to be indexed. Because this is our first website and traffic isn't really going to it because it's brand new, we can do this. But if you are updating an old site or you don't want search engines to find your website just yet, you can choose option B. My site is under construction and should not be indexed. You'll just need to remember to turn this off through the settings area when you're ready to go live. So we'll choose option A, we'll click next, and next Yoast is going to ask us what kind of site we have. We have a small offline business, it's a coffee shop. We'll choose next, and then it's going to ask if our website represents a company or a person. It represents a company called Coffee by Joe. If you have a logo, you should upload it here as well. Then Yoast will allow us to connect our social profiles and relate them to our website. So if you have a Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram associated with your business, you should fill them in here. Under search engine availability, it's going to look at the content types that we have available and we can choose whether or not to show them in search engines. Right now we only have posts and pages and we want both of them to show up. But if you have something like testimonials that are important only within the context of a page, you can select no and they will not be shown by search engines. We'll click next. It's going to ask us if we have multiple authors. We'll choose no. 
and then we can integrate with the Google Search Console. To do this, we can click Get Google Authorization Code. This will require us to have a Google Analytics or Google account. We'll click Allow, and then we'll be given an authorization code, which we can then paste and click Authenticate. Now our website's authenticated with Google. If we had any profiles associated, they would show up here. These profiles include SEO tools that Google makes available to us. While this is not an SEO centric video, I would recommend you at least check out Google Analytics. We'll click next. And now we come to the title settings. This is going to affect how our website appears in search engine results. We're going to leave the defaults on for now. We'll click next and then we'll be prompted to sign up for the Yoast newsletter. We'll ignore that and we'll be prompted to check out Yoast SEO's premium plugin. Yoast does have a very good premium plugin and if you are ready to take your SEO to the next level, I would recommend checking out that plugin. With that, we have completed all the steps in the wizard, so we'll click close. The reason that we want to configure Yoast SEO before adding the rest of our content is because we can now use Yoast SEO when creating our content. If we go to pages and then go to the home page, for example, we see a Yoast SEO box. And here we can choose a focus key phrase like coffee. And we can modify the SEO title and description and get a preview of what they will look like in the Google search results. Again, this is not an SEO video, but this is a very good tool to have, especially if you're trying to organically grow your website. With that, there are two more things we need to do. One is create a Google Maps API key that we can use with the Google Maps block. We're actually going to do that when we create our contact page. The other thing we need to do is make sure that Ninja Forms has a form that we can use. So if we click on Ninja Forms, it'll bring us to the Ninja Forms dashboard. And you can see that there is already a form created for us. If we click on that form, we'll be brought to the form settings. It has name, email, message, and submit. This is everything that we're really looking for with our form. But we do want to click advanced and go to the display settings. Since we're going to be integrating this form into our own contact page, we're going to turn display form title off. Then we'll click done and publish. Now let's go ahead and finish up the rest of the content. We'll click pages and first we'll do the about page. So we have our title about, we'll change this to about coffee by Joe. And then we have the ability to start adding content. If we just want to write content, we can do that by simply typing. But if we want some more advanced content, we can click on the plus sign. So a nice way to start this page might be with a big cover image. So we'll choose the cover block. From our media library, we will choose the coffee beans image and then we'll add a title. When we add our title, we can move our cursor to the next section, and here we can start adding copy. So let's just go ahead and do that real quick. Once we add some text, we can use the block editor to add a gallery of images, and we'll just add the images we've already uploaded. 
And then we can also change the settings. So maybe we want to make this a two column gallery. So we get this nice setup here. The last thing we might want to do is encourage people to contact us. So we'll click the plus sign again and we'll search for a button block. We'll add that. We can add the text. And then we can search for a URL. So we'll type CON and contact will show up. And then the editor will allow us to do things like center the button, change the style maybe to an outline or a square, and change the colors. So we'll make this a black background with some off white text. With that, we'll click update and we'll go to view page. So here is our about page. Our blog is on autopilot. This will automatically get populated when we add new posts to our website and they'll show up in reverse chronological order. One thing we do want to do is delete the first post. We'll move that to the trash and we'll create a placeholder post. So we'll create this simple post and click publish. That way our blog post has some content on it. And then the last thing we want to set up is our contact page. So we'll go ahead and click edit. And we're going to add a couple of things to this page. First, we'll add some simple text. And we'll add the ninja forms form that we just configured. So we'll go ahead and click add block and find the ninja forms form. And you can see that it's displaying in line exactly as it will on the page. And then the last thing we're going to add is that Google Maps from the Google Maps plugin we've added. And I want that to sit above the text. So I'm going to click the add block icon that's right below the title and I'm going to choose the map. Now as you can see this map is generating but we are being told to create our own API key. The plugin developer generously included theirs so that the plugin works out of the box but in order to avoid errors we need to create our own. While this link will technically take us to the place we need to go there are clearer instructions over at this URL you see on the screen right now. And this is the Google Maps platform documentation. So the first thing we're going to do is click get started. From here, we are going to click the Google Maps product and then click continue. Now it's time to select a project. If you don't have any projects created, you can go ahead and click create a new project and give it a name. We'll call this Coffee by Joe, and then we'll click Next. Next, you'll have to create a billing account. But don't worry, Google Maps API is generally free unless your website gets a ton of traffic. So we'll click Agree to the Terms and Conditions and Continue. We'll review our information and click Start My Free Trial. You'll then get prompted letting you know that the Google Maps platform API key is being enabled and you're all set. You're given an API key which you can double click to copy or click on the copy icon. We'll click done and then we'll go back to our website. Now we can replace the API key here with our own API key. Then it's time to fill out the information. So we'll add the address of our coffee shop. We can choose to zoom in or out. As well as select the height. So we'll keep this pretty tight. 
And now we have a Google map on top of our contact page. If we click update and then view page, you'll see that everything is looking pretty good. And that's it. We now have a fully functional website for our business that took us only an afternoon to set up. We chose our theme, selected our plugins, and went ahead and designed the homepage and added a bunch of content. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to click the thumbs up down below and subscribe to Winning WP for more great content.